Hey everybody, Kendra the Vet Tech here for another study session Saturday. We're going to carry on today with our basic clinical math. Last time we talked about basic clinical math in relation to injectables, so determining how we know how many mils, milliliters of 50 pound or 100 pound patient gets of an injectable. Today we're going to kind of follow along that same line, but expand on it a little bit with tablets and capsules. So figuring out which strength from our pharmacy we pick to dispense, and then according to doctor's instructions, how many tablets we're going to dispense of said drug. So let's just get started here today. First example we're gonna to use today will be carprofen. Typically in, in small animal pharmacies, carprofen comes in 25, 75, and 100 milligram offerings. So when we calculate out for our patient, we'll have three different options to choose from. Let's just get started with our first example patient and go from there. We'll say that our first patient today is 50 pounds. Doctor says dosage is one mg per pound. And then we wanna do this BID for five days. So BID twice daily or every 12 hours, and we wanna do it for five days. So we need to figure out how many milligrams our 50 pound patient needs and how many tablets we're going to dispense and of which strength, since we have three options in our pharmacy here. Let's get started by setting up our calculation or dimensional analysis, so 50 pound patient. This one's super easy since our dosage is in mg per pound. We'll just throw our pound up here with our one milligram. Cross out our pounds, 50 times one, is 50 milligrams. When we're talking in terms of strength for tablets and capsules, if you have multiple options, like you do, for example, with carprofen, it's easiest to stop your dimensional analysis in the milligrams, so finding the dose that your patient needs, and then go from there. So let's just say, I'm going to show you the bottles we figured out how much our patient needs, 50 milligrams. So let's go to our pharmacy. In our little pharmacy, we have 25 milligram carprofen. We also have the option of 75 milligram carprofen. And finally, our 100 milligram carprofen. Really quick, let's do the math so that we know how to set this up in dimensional analysis if we come across the drug that's not as easily calculated as this. So let's start with our, our high one, our 100 milligram. How are we gonna figure that out, how many tablets the patient would need? New dimensional analysis, so our patient needs 50 milligrams. And our high end, our high strength is 100 milligrams per tab. So our milligrams cancel 50 divided by 100 is half a tablet. If you don't have the 100s for some reason or you're just curious how this all works out, let's look at the lower end and see how many tablets our patient would need then, putting it into our dimensional analysis. So our low end ones are 25 milligram. So our patient needs 50. Low end tablets are 25. Fifty divided by twenty-five is two. Okay. So just speaking from terms of efficiency and ease for the client it would be much easier for them to give half a tablet to their pet as opposed to two full tablets. So for the sake of this example, we've decided we're gonna dispense 100 milligram carprofen tablets. Let's reset a little bit here. So now we can move on to the next part of our task. We need to figure out how many tablets we're going to dispense now. All right. 
So we know we need half a tablet, and we're gonna do it twice daily. So let's figure that out first, how many tablets we need per day. So half a tablet times two, or two times per day. So that's gonna come out to one tablet. Okay, one tablet per day. Last part of our equation is they need to have enough to go through five days of treatment. So our one tablet times five days. One times five, five. So now we know that for our 50 pound patient at a dosage of one mg per pound, receiving this drug twice daily for five days, we need to go to our pharmacy, get our 100 milligram carprofen and count out five tablets for our client. Okay, so that's our first example with the carprofen. Yay! Not only do we know how to calculate the drugs for this patient, now we know how to fully go through the dispensing cycle for our patient as well. I wanna just show you a second quick example for times when the math doesn't work out beautifully and I don't want you guys to freak out. So let's say same drug, carprofen, but we have a 115 pound patient. Set up with our usual dosage here. So one mg per pound, 115 times one, so this patient is going to get 115 milligrams. Ugh, that's a little ugly, right? Because you can't do 100 milligrams, that'd be 15 milligrams shy. You can't do 100 plus a 25 milligram because that would be 10 milligrams over. Well, what if we did our 75s, our middle of the road one? So 115 milligrams in our 75 milligram tablet, that comes out to 1.53333 and on and on and on. But remember when we talked about rounding, for purposes of learning, there is no rounding. Cut it off at the, at the nearest demarcation of measurement. So when we do that, if we cut it here, huh. We can easily do one and a half tablets. Super easy, great, all right. So our 115 pound patient will get one and a half tablets. So that wraps up our first example here with carprofen, with an actual dosage, and how to know how many to count out. Our next example we're going to talk about will be using dosage ranges. So sometimes that can seem really, really scary. So let's just write that up here and go over what happens if we're given instructions with ranges in it. So the second example I'm going to give you is around the drug Apoquil. Let's just get started. Let's say that our pretend patient here is 18 pounds. The dosage range for Apoquil is 0 0.4 to 0 0.6. Mix per kg, so back to our usual mix per kg here. Doctor says, we're just starting out this drug, so let's do it twice daily, but I wanna do it for 14 days. All right, so we write our note for BID, twice daily, times 14 days. I like to just use a D to shorten the, the days there. When we're working with ranges, the easiest way to go about this is to find your high dose or your high dose and then find your low dose so that we know where we can go in the middle, where, where we're the safest at the high end and the low end and where we can fit that tablet in there. So let's just set up our dimensional analysis here. 18 pound patient, back to our classic, get rid of the pounds into kilograms. We'll do our low one first here, so 0 0.4 milligrams per kilogram. And then remember for purposes of calculating tablets when we have multiple options, which you do with Apoquil typically, we'll just stop at how many milligrams our patients dose. And then setting up our second equation, 18 pounds 
get rid of our pounds and do our high end here. Okay, so let's see where we are, low and high. When we do the math here, our low comes out to 3.27 milligrams. And then our high end, the 0.6 comes out to 4.9. So we need to find a tablet that is somewhere within this range. Let's go to our pharmacy and see what we have. For Apoquil, in our pharmacy today, we have 3.6 milligram tablets, 5.4 milligram tablets, and a 16 milligram tablet. And looking at our range there, 16 is obviously not an option, but between, so the next lowest are 5.4 and 3.6. Well, our 3.6 fits perfectly within our range. All right, so our 18 pound patient, each dose is one 3.6 milligram tablet. We're gonna do this twice daily. So we need one full tablet times two times per day. So that would be two full tablets each day and we need to do this for 14 days. So our two tablets times 14 days is 28. All right, so we need to grab 28 of our 3.6 milligram tablets to dispense to our client. So that's a quick breakdown on figuring out ranges and then following the directions to be able to count it out for clients. Before we go today, I would like to touch on capsules. So in our first example, we talked about halving tablets, super easy to uh, get the dose down really close and be able to just do one and a half of a tablet, but you can't half a capsule. So let's move on to our next example. I'd like to chat about gabapentin. So gabapentin comes in capsules it's being used much more frequently these days. So let's just talk about that. I'll do this one on a range for you as well. So let's say our patient is 50 pounds, again, for this example. Doctor says, I really wanna see this 50 pound patient in a four to eight mg per kg range. Okay. and. I'm not gonna do the count out all the way on this one, guys. I just wanna really show you how we need to take into account that we can't half a capsule. So from our last example, we learned low and high. Let's set this one up really quick here. So 50 pounds, 2.2 pounds per kilogram. Start with our low at four megs per kg and then set one up for our high range. So our high, we don't wanna go above eight. Okay, so let's do the math. Divide by 2.2 times four, divide by 2.2 times eight. So we come out with 90 milligrams on the bottom and then 181 on top. So our patient needs to be somewhere in this window, somewhere between 90 and 181. All right, let's say we have this 100 milligram gabapentin here on hand. Okay, so 100. We could do two capsules but that would be 200, 100 times two is 200, right? That's too high. We could do 150, that would be nice and well within our range there, but you can't half a capsule, okay? So for this particular patient, we'll just do one 100 milligram capsule of the gabapentin. It's well within our range, 
taking into account that we can't half a capsule. So always remember that while you're doing your calculations and figuring out how much you're going to give of a certain tablet or capsule is things can't be halved sometimes. So that wraps us up today, guys, for our study session Saturday. If you have questions about what we learned today or you have topics that you would like to learn more about, feel free to shoot me a message either on Facebook or at KendraTheVetTech at gmail.com. You can also learn about other vet tech topics through my podcast, Kendra the Vet Tech. It can be found on Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, Podcast Addict, or Spotify. Thanks, guys.